Give attention. You will be heard. God save these United States, the great state of Florida, and this honorable court. Ladies and gentlemen, the Florida Supreme Court, please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to the Florida Su Supreme Court on this joyful occasion. Um, we're going to stand again now uh, and we'll, we will begin with the pledge and then have an invocation and then the singing of the national anthem and I'll introduce each person. Uh, as it's as it's their time, but our, the pledge will be led by uh, Justice Sasso's sons, William and Adam. If we could please stand, thank you. And now the invocation will be done by Lucy Bradley, Justice Sasso's sister. Let us pray. Holy God, your ways are just and your judgments are true. We come to you with grateful hearts that you reveal yourself to us. We ask that you grant wisdom and vision to those who serve as judges of this state. We especially ask that you would remember Meredith, O oh Lord, and grant her an understanding heart, courage, and humility as she undertakes her responsibilities. Please give Meredith perseverance and patience in all that is required of her, and remind her that she can find rest in you. We also ask for your blessing on her, Mike, and their children, that they would flourish under your hand. May all who are here today support Meredith in her pursuit of truth and administration of justice. And may all who are here today find peace in your love for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now our national anthem will be sung by Graham Pallott, uh, one of Justice Sasso's current law clerks. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the seated. Welcome to the court. Uh, let me begin with some introductions. 
Uh, most importantly, I'd like to welcome Justice Sasso's family to our court. Uh, we know what a proud day this is for you, and I'd like to especially recognize Justice Sasso's beloved grandfather, Roberto, who is uh, very, very uh, a great blessing to Meredith, I know, in her life, uh, 102 years old, and uh, Meredith can't stop talking about him. Sir, we're very happy to have you here today. We're honored, we're honored to have the Lieutenant Governor, Jeanette Nunez, thank you for being here. Um, and we'll be uh, seeing a video soon from Governor DeSantis. Uh, we have members of the legislative uh, branch here, executive branch officials. I know we have um, lots of folks from the executive office of the governor uh, in attendance. Um, we have uh, former members of our court, um, Justice Harding, um, Justice Bell, Justice Polston, Justice Lawson, uh, now Judge Lagoa and Judge Luck. Um, Robert, I want you to be able to enjoy it today, so we're not going to make fun of you at all. <laughs> um, uh, we have too many members of, the, of the, our state and federal judiciary to count. Thank you for being here. Uh, many, if not all, members of the Supreme Court JNC. Um, leadership of the Florida Bar. We have the deans of several law schools here, including I think I saw Dean McAllister from UF College of Law there. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I think second to her pride in, in her family for Meredith is her, is her pride in anything UF related. So I know she's happy that you're here. Um, I just want to also just, uh, you know, as, as we all know, um, um, Justice Sasso was, was appointed uh, after the retirement of Justice Polston, and we just want to thank you again for your service to the court. You're a beloved friend. You'll always be a member of the court family, and thank you for everything that you did for the court and for the people of the state of Florida. Um, I just wanted, in the, in the couple of minutes here that I have in the, for this introduction, I just wanted to take a moment to kind of uh, put Justice Sasso's appointment in historical context. Um, we're going to hear, obviously, all about um, Justice Sasso, the person, the judge, the lawyer, uh, about her family and everything from the speaker. So I thought it might make sense to talk a little bit about her, the, not just the context of our court sort of writ large, but the specific seat that uh, Justice Sasso um, will be occupying on the court. Um, so obviously she was appointed after the retirement of um, Justice Polson, and immediately before that for this particular seat, um, holders of that seat are names uh, that, that are familiar to us, Justices Bell, Shaw, and Sunberg, just to name a few. Um, but I'd like to look farther back in time. Um, the seat that Justice Sasso will hold actually traces back to Justice Ashen Bentley Hart, who's one of the three original justices appointed after our court was reconstituted after the Civil War under the 1868 Constitution. Um, justice Hart, like uh, Justice Sasso, was a native Floridian. In fact, he was the first native Floridian to serve on our court. He also was the first member of our court to be elected governor of the state of Florida. Another holder of the seat that Meredith is in uh, is Justice Lawrence Mitchell, who also was elected governor of the state. Um, I was curious sort of what kinds of little nuggets I would find when I started going back. And I felt like I was recreating the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew or something. Or something. <laughs> um, not all of Justice Sasso's predecessors in this seat shared her textualist judicial philosophy. Uh, for example, Justice Roy Harrison served on the court from 1937 to 1952. One of his colleagues described him as someone who avoided quote unquote legalistic approaches and instead relied on, quote, pretty sound cracker logic. <laughs> that, that sounds like the unmeredith to me. Um, what I was most excited to find when I, on this historical journey uh, was that this seat that Meredith uh, Sasso will hold was also previously held by Justice Fred Davis, who served from 1931 to 1937. Justice Davis is the only member of the court to serve as Attorney General of the state and Speaker of the House of Representatives, but more interestingly, he attended Leon High School here in Tallahassee, just like Justice Sasso. 
Um, also, he uh, joined the court at a relatively young age. He was the youngest person ever to serve as Chief Justice. And apparently, he developed his love for the law after immersing himself in Blackstone's commentaries as a teenager. And that intellectual curiosity reminds me of someone else we know and love on the court. So. And finally, and Ricky, this is going to break your heart. Justice Sasso, although we've had several justices who attended the UF uh, College of Law, this particular seat has not been held by someone from the UF College of Law until Justice Sasso. So, <laughs> Ricky, there, there you go. Um, so, Justice Sasso, I just want to say on behalf of all of our colleagues on the court, we're very blessed to have you. We know that you're going to do great things, and we're very excited for your service. Okay, and now we'd like to begin uh, the more formal part of our ceremony here uh, with a video presentation from Governor Ron DeSantis. After that, uh, Lieutenant Governor Nunez will approach me at the bench to ceremonially present Justice Sasso's credentials. Congratulate Justice Meredith Sasso on her investiture to the Florida Supreme Court. This spring, when then Judge Sasso came to my office to accept her letter of appointment, she brought along her two sons, who could not have been prouder of their mom, and I'm sure her two boys and her husband, Michael, are just as proud of her today as they were then. During her time on the Fifth and Sixth District Courts of Appeal, she established a track record of sound jurisprudence rooted in originalism and textualism. She understands that the role of the judiciary is not to make policy or, as stated by Alexander Hamilton, to exercise neither force nor will but merely judgment. Justice Sasso is also a great public servant as demonstrated by her time volunteering as a guardian ad litem, representing vulnerable children who had nowhere else to turn. As Justice Sasso takes her seat on the bench, for the first time in Florida history, there will be three women sitting on the Florida Supreme Court simultaneously. And as a Cuban American, Justice Sasso is now the fourth Hispanic justice appointed to the high court in the past five years. Justice Sasso joins a court that is second to none in its commitment to constitutional first principles and to the faithful and impartial application of the law. I have no doubt that the Florida Supreme Court is the best state court in the nation, and with Justice Sasso on board, it will remain so for many years to come. I was glad to appoint her in May, and I'm honored today to be able to welcome her officially on to the Florida Supreme Court. Congratulations, Justice Sasso. I'm confident you will make our state proud. Lieutenant Governor, if you could please approach the bench. Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize Mr. Scott Westheimer, President of the Florida Bar, for a presentation. Chief Justice Muniz, Justices, Justice Sasso, colleagues and distinguished guests, it's my true honor and privilege to be here today representing the more than 111,000 lawyers of the Florida Bar, the third largest bar in this country, and our Board of Governors on this exciting day. Justice Sasso, congratulations on becoming one of Florida's most important public servants and as the 93rd Justice of this Supreme Court. A co-equal and independent branch of government, the court system is a pillar of our Constitution, our form of government, but makes our state and country so great. Thank you for your dedication to the court system, for you and your family's sacrifices to be here today, and for your willingness to serve the citizens of our great state. The bar and its members are here to support you and stand ready to assist you in any endeavor. The bar has a long-standing tradition of giving a Bible to each new justice, which I know is in your chambers, but right there, excellent. Hope it becomes a cherished memory of this day and is a reminder of the binding commitment each of us makes to upholding the Constitution and the laws of Florida. May this Bible also be a source of strength and inspiration to you as you represent our profession and our core values. We all truly appreciate and respect your service and wish you, Mike, 
William and Adam, the best as you embark on this venture. I know you will continue to inspire and guide others as a justice of this court, as you have always done. Congratulations and go Gators. The court will now recognize Judge Molly Nardella of the Sixth District Court of Appeal to the podium for your remarks. Thanks. May it please the court. My name is Molly Nardella. Meredith Berrios Sasso and I have been friends for two decades now, and for some time we were colleagues on a District Court of Appeal. I'm privileged to have some time to tell you about her today. I know very few people in my life as serious and thorough as Justice Sasso. She is disciplined, both mentally and physically. She is devout. She is intentional in all of her roles, including as wife and mother. Her thirst for knowledge is rare. I've never known Justice Sasso not to be reading a book or listening to a podcast, always with the aim of gaining knowledge rarely for entertainment. On an endless number of subjects that affect things that matter to her, she's never satisfied that she knows enough. With her health, her family, her life, and her work, she is incredibly disciplined and extremely well informed. So what does this say about her? Why is she uncommonly studious and intensely serious? After two decades of friendship, I offer you this answer. Justice Sasso has an inner sense of gratitude that drives her. The causal relationship between gratitude and seriousness was not intuitive to me. But as a mother, I've come to realize that if you're truly grateful for something, you preserve it and perfect it, even if the work required to do so is drudgery. In other words, if you're truly grateful for something, you take it extremely seriously. And so I thought, what is it about Justice Sasso that makes her so grateful? The answer, I think, lies in her inheritance. Justice Sasso was blessed with the greatest of inheritances, four amazing grandparents, all of whom poured into her, and one of whom is with us today, Roberto Barrios. Mr. Barrios fled communism, settling eventually in Tallahassee, Florida. His impact on Justice Sasso is immeasurable. And the stories of how his once great country collapsed, those stories captured her. Most of my generation did not grow up with such stories, and it shows. Too far removed from hard times, it seems sometimes that there's a sense of unseriousness that pervades my generation. We have become complacent taking things for granted that we ought not to. But some, some have remained immune, and Justice Sasso is among this group. She never forgot that what we have in America is something to be grateful for, that it's something to fight for, that it's something to protect and preserve because the challenges will inevitably come. The children and grandchildren of immigrants who fled persecution, famine, dictatorship, communism, often remember the secret that so many of us forget, the secret that things do not have to be this way, that in fact things are historically not this way, that what we have here is special, and that it may not be here forever. They know that the separation of powers is not just a concept in a seventh grade social studies book. It is the most important shield we have against tyranny and that when it weakens, when men aggrandize power, things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Justice Sasso understands this concept so deeply that she has no other way of approaching her mission than as a titanic struggle against regression to the historical mean of tyranny, poverty, and arbitrary justice. The road to hell is truly paved with good intentions. And Justice Sasso knows that every time our system erodes, 
Such means are always justified by the ends desired. And so with this knowledge, without hesitation, she has stepped into the gap to help the center hold. She was pregnant when she took a job in Tallahassee, Florida to work for Governor Scott. And in doing so, she turned her life upside down. She was pregnant again when she was appointed to the 50 CA. She has never taken a traditional maternity leave and no leave at all when she served on the 5th District Court of Appeal. Think about that. She's never asked for help and she has never complained. And it has always reminded me of this allegory from medieval times about a traveler who happens upon three stones mason. For the first, he stops and he asks, what are you doing? The stonemason looks up and he responds wearily, can't you see I am cutting and laying stone, my back is killing me and I can't wait to stop. The traveler continues on his way and he comes upon a second stonemason. What are you doing, he asks. I am cutting stone, I am building a wall, I am grateful to have this job so that I can provide for my family. As the traveler walks on, he encounters a third stonemason, doing the same work as the previous two, and he asks, what are you doing? The man stands up straight, with his arms out and his face radiant, he responds, I am building a cathedral. All three workers are doing the same work but their vision is very different. If I can get anything across about Justice Sasso, it is that she is determined to build her cathedral in her life, in her work, in her family. She will carry any stone, any distance, if it is in pursuit of that goal, and she will never complain about the drudgery of any task because she has a purpose in my life. I'm both convicted and inspired by Justice Sasso. My grandparents had hard enough lives, but they never fled a tyrant's whip. I see in myself sometimes the symptoms of today's cultural malaise, my generation's ability to take good things for granted, to destroy them. On these days, I am thankful for the example that Justice Sasso sets. The appointment of Justice Sasso, it's a great honor to her but it's also clear to me why she was chosen for this job. On account of how she has approached her life, she has been called out and set apart. She has been faithful with the little things. And now she is given stewardship of great things, given stewardship of not an insubstantial part of our government, our system, our checks and balances. This is the stone that she has volunteered to carry for us. And I think it right that we should recognize this. We should recognize the level of determination and devotion, and we should wonder why it is not as prevalent today as it has been in times past. And we should be grateful that we have someone like Justice Sasso who has not become unserious, who has not become complacent, who has not forgotten what human nature is like, and who has not taken our system for granted. And we should strive to emulate that. So we gather here today for a public ceremony to reflect on the office which Justice Sasso has assumed, to which she has been chosen. And we see the hand of providence at work here. We see the right woman for the right time. And I thank God for this, because everything that Justice Sasso has touched has been blessed. She has been faithful in every endeavor, truly, meaningfully faithful and she will be faithful in this role. And on account of her faithfulness, the people of this state will be blessed. They say that the past is a foreign country. And as I get older, I see just how true that is. There is no going back. Charles de Gaulle was right when he said that the graveyards are filled with indispensable men. They are. But there are new men and new women ready for the challenge, for new times. Justice Sasso represents the best of this new generation, my generation, those of us born in the 1980s. She is the star in our firmament. She is our pioneer, the first of us and the best of us. And so Justice Sasso, as you embark on this journey, I leave you with this promise from the book of Psalm. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Thank you. Orlando can definitely produce some impressive judges, as we see from these from these three. I was loving that until you mentioned having been born in the 80s. I feel ancient. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to call upon another geezer, Ben Gibson, uh, to approach the podium to give remarks. May it please the court, Chief Justice Muniz, Justice Kennedy, Justice LaVarga, Justice Curiel, Justice Grosshands, Justice Francis, and Justice Meredith Sasso. What a privilege to be here today as we honor this court's newest justice. Today is a celebration. If you know Meredith, you know that she possesses those traits that make a great jurist. Humility, hard work and discipline, fortitude, courage. Not only does Meredith possess those traits, but most importantly, she understands why they are so important in a jurist. Now, Meredith will be the first to tell you she did not grow up dreaming of being a Florida Supreme Court justice. In fact, apparently, growing up, she wanted to be a shepherd. Now, I think that's just a testament to her humility because there's probably no humbler a position than a shepherd. And then if that didn't work out, apparently she wanted to be a pizza maker. And then eventually she came around to wanting to be a lawyer. And then, you know, maybe someday, she had a maybe someday goal of being on the judiciary. Well, Meredith, I'm here to tell you that maybe someday is now today. When you meet Meredith, there is no trace of ego. This job for her is not about a title. It's not about the limelight or accolades or public praise. It's not about her. It's about something much bigger. It's about serving the people of the state. It's about protecting the rule of law, securing our liberties, and upholding the constitutions of our state and our nation. My wife, Jordan, and I, we met Meredith and her husband, Mike, years ago when Mike and I were serving on the Florida Bar Young Lawyers Division Board of Governors. We bonded quickly over similar views and interests. <laughs> Meredith was born in Tallahassee and living in Orlando. I was born in Orlando, living in Tallahassee. Our firstborn sons, William and Bennett, were born only 10 days apart and soon became best buds. And we, sh we shared a strong love for the Florida Gators in all kinds of weather. In 2016, 2016, just seven years ago, I was serving as Deputy General Counsel for then Governor Scott. Will Spicola was the, gov the General Counsel. And we were looking for a great lawyer to join our office. And I remember calling my friend and former Governor's General Counsel, Jesse Panuccio, to get his thoughts. And he said to me, he said, what about Meredith Sasso? And I said, Meredith? Well, I mean, she would be incredible but there's no way we're gonna get her to leave Orlando and her plush private sector job and come to Tallahassee. In football terms, Meredith is what we call a five-star recruit. <laughs> she was excelling as an in-house trial and appellate lawyer and even had her own company car. She had been with three, <laughs> three private law firms before that, handling complex commercial litigation, jury trials and, and appeals. She had all the ingredients of a great lawyer, meticulous attention to detail outstanding writer and excellent oral advocate. But somehow we were able to convince Meredith to join the governor's legal office. And I can tell you it was not the money we offered her or the life convenience, especially since she started while pregnant with her first son, William. Now, this is where I have to give credit to her husband, Mike. Mike, you have stood by Meredith every step of the way. You have sacrificed for her and for your family, supported her dreams, and have had her back. Because not only do you believe in her, you also believe in the work she is doing and the impact it has on, on our state. And we are all grateful and thankful for that. Meredith, of course, thrived in the governor's legal office. She personally represented the governor in litigation and appeals, including before this very court. We interviewed hundreds of judicial nominees, and Meredith quickly became known in the office for asking the hardest questions. Some of you in this room may have faced her daunting questions. She became the chief deputy general counsel under general counsel Dan Norby. 
She managed to do it all while balancing life as a new mom and still commuting between Orlando and Tallahassee. She was appointed to the 5th DCA, and she approached that job with the same determination, discipline, humility, and fortitude that she approached her other jobs. And through the most ironic of circumstances, she was even named chief judge of the 6th DCA, where some might say she finally achieved her dream of becoming a shepherd. <laughs> You might ask, where does she get this drive? Where does her hard work and her discipline and the conviction come from? Well, it's been mentioned before today, but I will tell you, you do not really know Meredith Sasso until you meet her grandfather. His name, as was mentioned before, is Roberto Barrios, but he is known simply as Poppy Bear. He's here with us today, and in just a few weeks, he will be celebrating his 102nd birthday. Hard worker doesn't even begin to describe a man who still worked his land in Lloyd, Florida, right outside of Tallahassee up until he was 100. Apparently, he only recently decided that maybe now's the time to retire. <laughs> if it wasn't for mandatory retirement, I would say with those genes, Meredith, you could probably serve on this court for 60 years. <laughs> Meredith's paternal grandparents left Cuba in 1953 a time when parts of the Cuban Constitution had been suspended, seeking the liberty enjoyed by United States citizens. Her grandfather arrived in New York on a Sunday and began working in a factory on Monday. Her grandmother and father joined him soon after. They worked hard, eventually settled in Hialeah, until they moved to Tallahassee when Meredith, Meredith was just a toddler. Meredith grew up right here in Tallahassee, attended Leon High School. And as a child, she heard stories of what it was like to live in a country without the rule of law, where the rule of law has been surrendered to the rule of fear. And growing up, Poppy Bear was right there with her the whole time, helping to shape her view of the world and also ensuring that she was probably the only kid in school in Tallahassee who had homemade plantain chips packed for lunch. <laughs> and he taught her along the way, mainly through his actions, that you are not entitled to anything but through hard work and a little bit of luck, you can accomplish anything. Expectations were high. There was no tolerance for excuses, laziness, or complaints. Meredith was taught that there is too much opportunity in this country to let it go to waste through complacency. When Meredith worked in the governor's office, Poppy Bear would make her weekly meals from the food he harvested on his own land. I was lucky enough to visit Poppy Bear at his home in Lloyd some years ago with Meredith and Mike. I remember it was a, a warm, humid summer night, and we enjoyed a homemade, authentic Cuban dinner. It was instantly clear to me at that time in our conversations that it was Poppy Bear who had instilled his incredible work ethic in his granddaughter. And what a legacy. Imagine, it's 1953. A young man has just arrived in this country, having fled the Batista regime in Cuba. He's full of optimism and the hope that America offers. Imagine if you could tell this young man, if you work hard to improve the life of your family and your grandchildren, and if you teach them the lessons of life, you just fled a country with no regard for the rule of law. But in this country, one day, your own granddaughter is going to sit on the Florida Supreme Court and uphold the rule of law. This only happens in America. And Mr. Berrios, you must be so proud today. And Meredith's story is not really even unique. Countless people in this room have a similar story because of what this country offers, because of the liberties and freedoms enshrined in our Constitution, and that is something worth protecting. And Meredith knows this. She understands that our American form of government is exceptional, but also fragile. And that is something that is worth protecting. For it to endure, the actors in each branch of government must respect their role as framed and limited by the Constitution. She knows that never submitting will for judgment and standing in humility in her limited role matters. She knows that the best agenda for a judge is no agenda. Because without this framework, what makes America the shining city on a hill does not work. And that matters. It matters because if America becomes a nation, where the rule of law does not matter, then people like her grandfather don't come here with a hope for this country. 
and stories like hers are not written. And that is where I believe it becomes personal for Meredith, where I believe she gets her courage, her convictions to apply the rule of law, regardless of personal consequences or public opinion. Just as Thomas once said that judges do not cease to be human beings when they go on the bench. In important cases, finding the right answer is often the least difficult problem. Having the courage to assert that answer and stand firm in the face of the constant winds of protest and criticism is often much more difficult. I have no doubt Meredith will calmly and courageously stand firm for the Constitution and the rule of law, regardless of what winds of protest or criticism may come her way. When Governor DeSantis appointed her, he knew, and we all here today know, that Justice Sasso is more than ready for the task ahead of her. Justice Sasso, congratulations. We pray that God will grant you wisdom, discernment, courage, and a little bit of fun while you serve on the state's highest court. May God bless you. Thank you for those excellent remarks, Ben. We now have arrived at the high point of today's investiture. At this time, Judge Eric Ice Noggle, a judge of the Fifth District Court of Appeal, will administer the oath of office at the podium. May it please the court. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to say a few nice things about my friend Meredith, Justice Sasso. So if, they, but they will be very brief, I promise. I'm deeply honored to participate in Justice Sasso's investiture today and to administer her oath of office. I would like to very briefly tell you firsthand just how exceptional she is as a jurist. I was lucky to serve with Justice Sasso, then Judge Sasso, on the Fifth District Court of Appeal for four years. I can tell you she approached every case with a thorough scrutiny and care and demonstrated time and again an uncanny understanding of a court's proper constitutional role and an unwavering commitment to her constitutional duties. So much so that I came to believe quite Sincerely, that the wisest of us very quickly learn that when Justice Sasso disagrees with you on a point, you probably better go check your work. And Mr. Gibson, I can confirm she asks very difficult questions, <laughs> as she should. Quite simply, working with then Judge Sasso made me a much better judge than I otherwise would have been. And for that, I will always be grateful to you, Justice Sasso. While selfishly, I hated to see her leave the Fifth District Court of Appeal, there is absolutely no doubt that she is now where Florida needs her most. Congratulations, Justice Sasso and Sasso family.
now we'll have the enrobing, and then Marshall Curse will escort Justice Sasso to the bench. Justice Sasso, we'd be honored now to hear your response. May it please the court. Um, thank you all so much for being here today. I really think that our most precious resource is time, and the fact that you all have chosen to spend yours here today um, truly means the world to me. I am just overwhelmed. I see so many people who spend so many hours and so much of their free time um, supporting this institution, who deeply care about this institution, and who have supported uh, those of us who serve this court. And so um, I am thankful for the opportunity to slow down for a moment <laughs> and to um, really to thank all of you all and to take this moment to celebrate everything you do. So it is in that spirit of gratitude that I wanted to offer my response. Um, I've, I've of course like to begin by thanking Governor DeSantis for the honor of this appointment. Um, the appointment is only made more meaningful because I know of the governor's studied appreciation for the, our structure of government and the unique role that the judiciary plays within that structure. But I am primarily thankful to the governor for allowing me this opportunity to serve the people of the greatest state in the union. Um, and in the, in the tradition of investitures, I'm going to be thanking people today who've had a specific role in my life. But I would, would like the people of Florida to know that I will both always honor the oath that I just took and always be aware that I am ultimately accountable to them. Now, we all know that the governor decides who to appoint, but there's lots of people who support him in that process. And so I'd like to thank you all now. Um, to the members of the Judicial Nominating Commission, thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you for dedicating your time and treasures to the appointment process. Um, I don't know who's happier that I don't have to interview in front of you all again, me or you, <laughs> but uh, I, I am, in all seriousness, I'm very grateful um, for your thorough vetting, for your incisive questions, and for the ultimate honor of your nomination. To the governor's staff, um, James Uthmeyer, thank you for being here, and Ryan Newman and your team. Uh, also, not sure who's happier that I don't have to interview with you all again, <laughs> me or you. Um, but I, I'm so thankful for you all. I think a lot of people see what you guys do and they see the influence and the power and all of that, but I'm not sure how many people appreciate the sacrifice. And so I really admire you all um, for your decision to serve your state and for pursuing what you believe in. I'm very thankful that you're willing to do it. There was also many, many people involved in this appointment process just on a volunteer basis. Um, so many of you wrote letters and made calls. I'm so thankful, especially for the prayers. Um, thank you all. And I am very aware that I would not be anyone that a governor was interested in appointing if it was not for the people that I served with. I will always value the time that I spent in private practice and the friends and the mentors I had along the way. But the trajectory of my career and who I am at the most really fundamental level changed pretty drastically when I entered public service. Um, you heard about the call from Jesse, but I will never forget my first interview 
for the EOG job. I was sitting across the table from Will Spicola and Pete Antonacci, and they just slide a statute across the table, you know, like, hi, how are you doing, or anything. Slide the statute across and start asking me a series of hypotheticals based on the statute. So for those of you who I did that to, I come by it honestly. <laughs> but um, I had no idea what a transformational opportunity it was going to be. They had no idea I was seven weeks pregnant. It just, it, we really broke even. Um, but thank you, Will, for the opportunity. Um, to all of you that I served with, Dan, Ben, Nick, John, Aaron, Peter, I saw him somewhere. Um, I think we even have Susan Smith in the house. Um, thank you. I, working with you, I became a better writer. Um, you inspired me to think more deeply. I'm primarily thankful because somehow you managed to inspire my dutiful nature to overcome my competitive nature. And um, I'm, I'm really indebted to all of you. I, of course, also want to thank our boss at the time, uh, Senator Rick Scott. It was, it was really a privilege to see how tire tirelessly he worked to serve the people of Florida. I think a lot of people could see that he didn't think there was any problem that was too big for him to tackle, but I'm not sure how many people appreciated that he also took the approach that there was no task that was beneath him, and that included picking up sticks after hurricanes. So I, I hope to emulate his work ethic and his laser-like focus throughout my career. I'm also thankful to Senator Scott for appointing me to the 5th DCA where my judicial career began and for the judges there. I can assure you that to the extent that I am a good judge today, it's because I got my start there. Um, I really learned so much from all of you. And of course, to my six DCA colleagues, I still have dot, dot, dot here because I was trying to figure out how to accurately describe what we did together. <laughs> um, but I'm just, I'm so proud of everything you all have been able to accomplish. And I know you're gonna take it far. It's gonna be good. <laughs> um, that's my current colleagues. I love this view. This is probably the best view in the state of Florida. Um, I have been a lifelong fangirl of the judiciary. And so it is, it is really a privilege to get to sit here. Um, I can tell you now that I've been able to peek behind the curtain, I am just more thankful than ever that you all have chosen to serve the state. You all are so smart um, and at the core just such good people and you can be doing so many other things. And I have also never been more convinced that a group of people is more concerned with getting it right rather than proving themselves right. And so thank you all, thank you for welcoming me. I hope we get to serve together for a very, very long time. I encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to my law clerks and judicial assistants, uh, Graham, who wasn't that beautiful, gosh, and Martin, Jensen, Tam, thank you all for putting up with me. Um, Jensen has been working with me two years and we worked together on three different courts. So it's, it's been some crazy times in the Sasso chambers. Um, but thank you all for sticking with me and for your impeccable work product. Oh, there they are. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right, now I need to tell you all about my friends. Um, in my view, the fact that we are here today is a testament to friendship more than anything else. Many people have heard the C.S. Lewis quote that friendship is born at the moment when one person says to another, what, you too, I thought it was the only one. And certainly that's the way most of my friendships began. But in his book, The Four Loves, C.S. Lewis goes on to describe how uniquely and really miraculous friendship is to the human condition. And it's because, it's because of its non-obligatory nature. We love our parents, but we have duties to them as children. We love our children, but we have duties to them as parents. Of course, we love our spouses, our soulmates, but we have many duties to them as well. By contrast, no man has a duty to be a friend to any other person. And so it's for that reason that C.S. Lewis explains that friendship has no survival value, but is instead gifted to us by the secret master of ceremonies as one of those things that gives value to survival. And it's because of the nature of friendship that I find myself frequently in awe of the fact that these magnificent people choose to be my friends. And so to my friends, thank you all for being there. Thank you for investing me, for putting up with me, for loving our kids, for always keeping my freezer stocked with ice cream. In the words of Cicero, you improve happiness and abate misery by doubling joy and dividing grief. And I hope I can be even the fraction of a blessing in your life that you've been in mine. Um, last but hopefully not least, I want to thank my family with this very robust section over here. 
Um, of course, my parents, I think it's safe to say I literally would not exist without you. <laughs> so thank you. Um, but just to give you an idea of what it was like growing up in our house, there's a lot of give and take, you might say debating, you might say arguing, maybe we can debate over the specific word later. But it's not necessarily because we do disagreed with each other. I kind of took it as we were just pushing each other every now and then. So you learned pretty quickly that if you didn't want to look silly when you're presented with whatever the issue of the debate was going to be that day, you needed to have a reasoned explanation for every step of your analysis and a defense of every conceivable application of your conclusion. Um, and it was a, a tad maddening at the time, but it's an exercise that became a habit that I'm very thankful for now. So thank you for that, but more than anything, thank you for providing that firm foundation of love and support. Knowing that I've always been tethered to that foundation has given me the freedom to go and pursue. Um, and obviously to my grandfather, Poppy Bear, uh, you gave me something money can't buy. You lit a fire in me that's carried me through my life and my career. You've ensured there's very few moments in my 40 years there where I've taken this country or the state for granted, so thank you. Um, I'm also thankful to my grandparents who have moved on for their, from their earthly pursuits. I uh, had the honor of swearing in on my mom's dad's Bible today. Um, and I attribute my, my Cuban grandparents with teaching me what a gift the country is, but uh, I attribute my mom's parents with teaching me what we need to do to maintain it and how to do that. And so because they can't be there, I'm especially thankful to my Alabama, Alabama family for making the trip today. Can't look at my Aunt Lucy. Um, <laughs> You, you all have been wonderful examples. Um, thank you for your love and for your dedication to intentionally cultivating what I think is the world's most important institution, which is the family. Um, and, but if that wasn't enough, I have this whole extra section of family that doubled once I got married. I really do have the best in-laws and cousin-in-laws and uncles-in-laws in the world. Um, so thank you, number one, for my husband. Um, and thank you for taking me in as your own so completely. I could not ask for anything else for me or for my kids. Um, you all are the best. And they also provide the logistical support for the traveling. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much. Um, all right, William and Adam, we're almost done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it has been said that children complicate life but so sweetly that they should serve to give the worker fresh courage rather than to lessen his resources. And that is true. So if Poppy Bear lit the fire in me, you all are, are the ones who provide the clarity of purpose to keep it going. So thank you. <laughs> like many moms who work outside the home, I am a bit self-conscious at times of our family's decision for me to take a job that keeps me traveling. Um, but when I look at this opportunity, through your perspective, rather than myopically focusing on my time away from you, I start to see its potential for beauty. So my prayer for you is that you will look forward to the boys' nights while I'm away, that you will relish in the time Uncle Ian picks you up and you get to double fist ice cream cones, <laughs> and that when you, you're my age, you'll look back and you'll appreciate all the time you got to spend with your grandparents. And I, will hope, I hope you will come to value the fact that as you are right now, you will be surrounded by great men. And I hope you look to them as examples and mentors. And now to the sassiest of all the sassos, <laughs> my husband. Of all the miracles that have led today, that have led to today, the most miraculous of all is that you know me better than anybody else in the room, and you're still here loving me and supporting me. I know the travel is not your favorite part either, but one of my favorite parts of this job is getting to go around the state. It does not matter what room I work, walk into if I'm in Naples or Melbourne or Miami or the House floor or the Senate offices, there is somebody who comes up to me knows you, loves you, and gives me the benefit of the doubt because of you. You are truly one of a kind, and I love you so much. So I have now exceeded. Okay. 
I've met my quota for sappy comments for the next 10 years, so I'm done. <laughs> I hope you all join us at the reception. Thank you. After hearing all those speeches, I think you can see why our court loves investiture so much and why we're so excited to be working with you, Meredith, and also why I feel so weak and soft in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd now like to recognize Nick Primrose for the benediction. Mr. Chief Justice, may it please the court. Justice Sasso, I'm honored that you've asked me to deliver the benediction on this most special occasion. You know that you're more than just a former boss, a former colleague, or even just a friend. You've always been a big sister uh, that I never had. And it's truly been a privilege to be part of this remarkable journey. So thank you for letting me tag along in your shadow. To all of our esteemed guests gathered here today, I extend my gratitude to you for your service and the impact on our state. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, if you'll please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Almighty and merciful God, as we witness the investiture of Justice Meredith Sasso, we are filled with gratitude. We pause to seek your blessings and guidance. We thank you for the members of the JNC who nominated Justice Sasso and for Governor DeSantis appointing her to this highest court. We pray that Justice Sasso finds guidance in Colossians 3.23 throughout her service. May she wholeheartedly dedicate herself to the tasks at hand, acknowledging that every effort is directed toward you, Lord, and not merely for human approval. May her actions stand as a testament of her unwavering commitment to serving you, placing trust in the promise of an eternal inheritance, a reward for her steadfast and diligent service. We know that you guard the course of the just and the way of the faithful ones. Grant Justice Sasso strength, perseverance, and the stability to ensure her feet do not slip in the face of challenges, criticisms, and external forces attempting to influence her decision making. Through her service to the institution of the Supreme Court and to the people of the state of Florida, continue to provide her humility and a desire to positively impact the judicial system. May her service, along with that of her colleagues on the bench, be a catalyst for Floridians to gain a deeper understanding of the limited but vital role the judiciary has in protecting our freedoms and upholding the laws of the United States and the state of Florida. May you shield and protect Justice Sasso, her husband Mike, and her sons William and Adam as they walk together on the path you've paved. We ask for your special blessing on their family. May they find strength in supporting the demands placed on her during this service. And may this journey instill in William and Adam a profound sense of purpose as they witness the impactful service of their mom. I pray for continued abundant blessings upon all of the esteemed leaders and guests gathered here this afternoon. May your wisdom and discernment brightly illuminate our endeavors. Bestow upon us the grace to navigate challenges with unwavering integrity and boundless compassion ensuring that our individual and collective efforts contribute to the greater good. I humbly ask for your unwavering protection over the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces and law enforcement offices throughout Florida. May your watchful eye be their guide, shielding and protecting them as they serve with honor and distinction or in dedication. It's with hearts full of gratitude for all of your goodness that we thank you, God. May your love continue to guide us your spirit be a steadfast source of strength, and your blessings surround us in every facet of our lives. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you. Uh, before we end the ceremonial session, on behalf of Justice Sasso and her family, 
in the court. We'd like to invite you to join uh, them and us at a reception at La Florida across the street. Uh, we thank the uh, Florida Supreme Court Historical Society for sponsoring that reception. Um, we really appreciate you being here. As always, this was a joyful occasion. Um, it's, it's great for all of us who work together to be surrounded by people who care about our colleagues and love our colleagues and helped um, get them where they are and support them. Um, and Justices Labarga and Kennedy have assured me that our next investiture will be no sooner than four years from now. So we're, <laughs> we're adjourned.